Welcome to the Icebreaker event, a five-day event to celebrate Payday 2's fifth anniversary. It is by no means an annual thing, we still have Crime Fest 2018 in October to look forward to, but this is more of a treat and something I've been waiting for. The Shacklethorne Auction is a strict black tie event taking place in a classic mansion in New England. While the exact location is unknown, we're being picked up from Boston. An auction, you say? Well, what might the content of said auction be? Well, a collection from the Shacklethorn Antarctic Expedition. Day one of the event reveals that one of the items is an astrolabe. An astrolabe is a device used by astronomers and navigators to measure the inclined position of the sky of a celestial body. This particular one has an unusual design and is much more complex than usual for the time period where these were common. It contains markings of an unknown language. The dating of this piece goes back hundreds or perhaps thousands of years being older than any similar device. It would be like discovering a space shuttle before the invention of flying. The elephant might have been the one to arrange our invitation to the event, but it is the introduction of Joy that will let us slip past security. She is, after all, Locke's protege, and most likely helped us with breaking feds and Henry's rock. Our hacker woman Joy has finally made her way over from the Switch to the PC, bringing with her the hacker perk deck, the signature SMG in both standalone and akimbo variant, as well as the programmer's humor baton. The hacker perk deck gives you two jammers, which, when active, last for six seconds. Each with its own 100 second cooldown, it can be reduced by six seconds per kill. It gives you 20% more total health, 20 health per kill whilst the jammer is active, plus 20 dodge for 30 seconds if you score a kill while the jammer is active, and your crew get 10 health per their own kills whilst the jammer is also active. The jammer is basically ECM feedback in loud, which can be handy if only for the fact that bulldozers are vulnerable to it, giving them the chance to be stunned briefly. During stealth, it is just like a quick little blocker. Think of it as a base level ECM, but it's only six seconds and it's instant. It's a workable perk deck. How about that? I imagine a team all running hacker could be quite interesting. The SMG is pretty basic. For the little I used it, it's not really my style. There are way too many better SMGs out there in both standalone complex, I mean, standalone and akimbo variant. Joy herself sounds like a pitch shift Sydney with slightly less Australian slang and more gamer related taunts. I played a game with just Joy and Sydney, and I wanted to cry, really. It was like listening to two of the same character. In the safe house, Joy doesn't get a room. Instead, she gets a van. Inside of the van, you can play a mini game of Tetris, styled like Payday, if that's your jam. Three side jobs were added, where you collect the three Illuminati boxes, and they appear in the safe house. Here is where things get interesting. As I had predicted, the medallion of proceeds can now be used as a key to open the boxes, which are now known as coffers. Each description of the coffers refer to lyrics from various songs of the album Elysium by Fields of the Nephilim, with the elephant's coffer in particular containing the line which is an Ancadian incantation from the Simon Necronomicon to invoke Anu, the god of the heavens, and Enki, god of the earth, said to be responsible for the flood in the Mesopotamian mythology. What's inside the coffers? Well, the scribe's coffer, the one with the reflected diamond logo, has a hexagon imprint inside but is empty. The other two coffers have a couple of rings with some unknown language inscribed on them. Although the alphabet is completely made up, we actually know what it says using simple substitution deciphering methods. The inscription reads, Where the four stand, portals will open. Then see thee how the world comes to an end. Furthermore, when you interact with the piano in Scarface's room, the rings start to resonate ominously. We also got a rather strange email afterwards. Apparently the FBI were tracking something but lost the signal from it at the same time some sort of quake happened. Whatever they were tracking was headed due south in the Pacific, but since the quake happened nowhere near the tracker, they are very confused why it went offline. This leads me to believe that when we hit the piano, all the coffer pieces resonate, even the one we don't have. 
which means that it is highly likely to be wherever the FBI tracker is. Oh, ho, ho. things are starting to really heat up now. By the way, you may or may not have seen a bunch of puzzle pieces all around the joint. Yeah, there's a 45 piece jigsaw going on that's revealing an image of an awkward court inspired mansion, which is implied to be the location of the Shacklethorn auction, which is taking place in a few hours. It is under the impression that these rings and the missing hexagon from the scribe's coffer are missing components of the astrolabe or some other device, which is most likely why we need to <clears throat> bid on it in this auction. Day two of Icebreaker reveals that another item, a journal, will also be up for auction. It has the initials AL, which according to the site, doesn't match any of the crew members. But to us, of course, it has to be August Lindenhurst. There is also a cocktail recipe going on for each day. And today's had a small contest to do with the naming of the one revealed on day two. Day three is out in a couple of hours. If you want to catch me, I'll try to stream the Shacklethorn heist sometime later the day. So go ahead and follow me on Twitch and expect a day three video sometime later.